Two pints, I think you said, Henry. Oh, I know, and a double whiskey. That's right. My bad. What, already, love? I've got to look my best for tomorrow. You'll never get to sleep at this time. Double dose. Mm, in that case, you'll never wake. Night. Good night, love. Uh, let me see, that'll be nine and four, Henry. She should have a good chance in that beauty contest tomorrow, Harry. That daughter of yours is the best-looking girl in Ambledown. <laughs> yeah, I know. But hardly makes her the best-looking girl in Europe, though, does it? Anyway, tomorrow's only the quarterfinals. Dad! Dad!
Yes, come in. Ah, Sullivan, good. I was beginning to think you weren't able to make it. Very nice. Yes, it's very comfortable, isn't it? Still, it needs to be. I can hardly afford the time out for this trip. But when you are succumbed to a diplomatic mission and your chairman refuses to step into an aircraft, there's very little you can do about it. Have you read the newspapers? Uh, yes, I've seen them. What do you think of it? Well, I don't even know enough to guess. It only just happened. Yes, well, this time it's different. They've actually asked for you. Usually you only call in when everything else has failed, huh? Your department is getting very famous, Sullivan. Well, I don't know whether to be pleased about that or not. The reports are there, too. You better take them with you. They like you on the case immediately. Ah, yes. I've finally been converted. What is it? 18 languages and 60 million copies sold. Or the other way around. How do you get on with King? Well, the results speak for themselves. I don't know where he gets his plots from. And the writing is really very good. All visitors ashore. Well, sir. Good. I'll get in touch with you when I get back. Oh, and I did enjoy reading the book. But you better not tell King that, huh? Not a chance. Theory, isn't it? Someone kidnap a whole village. Come on, Stuart. You know you need the exercise. They found that the wine that year had this extraordinary bouquet of roses. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Having trouble? Uh, not at all. Nice to see you're getting right down to business. Well, it's initial interrogation. Susan Lewis, Annabel Hurst, Hello. Stuart Sullivan. Hello. Hello. Susan's very kindly offered his accommodation here. Thank you. Will you join us? A uh, leader, maybe. I'd like to go and tidy up, if I may. Yes, of course. I'll show you your room. It's number six. I read the reports, Miss Lewis. Yes. Well, I, I thought you might have something to add. No, it's really so hard to believe. I can imagine. The men in costumes, blue light. It's what happened. The village is deserted. There's no one here. Except you. I went to bed very early. And you took a heavy sedative? Yes. I was entering a competition to select a European cover girl. I've been all through this before with the police. I know, but I prefer to hear you tell your story. It will be the same. I still have to hear it. Because you don't believe me. I didn't say that, Miss Lewis. But you'll admit that what you saw was bizarre, and uh, you had taken a heavy sedative. You mean it was an hallucination? Well, it's possible. No. No, you're wrong. Well, I'd still like to hear it. Then read the peace statements. I've said all I've got to say. My father is among the missing, Mr. Sullivan. Find him. Why don't you find him? I always thought interviews should be relaxing things. Sure. Any conclusions? The whole village was sensibly abducted. You must be joking. That's all dried up. They're on their way to London on a beer protest march. <laughs> Do you remember in DDD, Mark Kane found... DDD? Dead dames don't. Don't what? Found that everyone had been gassed, moved out of town. You have read it. Gassed? Well, it would excuse the kinky clubber our cooks wore. But Susan Lewis said the villagers were walking away. If they were gassed, how come? Well, she was extremely upset. She could have been mistaken. Mistaken about them walking, but not about the costume? No. Then you'll also remember that the B2 were trying to rob a bank Acetylene torches. Blue light. There is no bank here. And Susan Lewis was upstairs. Why wasn't she gas? Well, she was, and she recovered. Acetylene is water and calcium carbide. And what about the blood stain? No, oh, that was coincidence. Nothing to do with it. H2, C2. Blue light. How big is this village? There's the main street, a few outlying houses, small holdings, that sort of thing. Okay. Our first job is to check how far from the center the people are missing. It's been done. Not very thoroughly. 
I was distracted. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. You check south of the village street, and I'll take the north side. Still on a shoot. Why didn't you answer the door? It's my house. I do as I please. You better see my identification. My name's Loring, Colonel Loring. You don't take any chances, do you, Colonel? I'm not a nervous man, Mr. Sullivan, but uh, after what's happened, I'm careful. Do you expect further trouble? No, but... Uh... You didn't hear anything that night? Not a thing. My house seems to have been on the periphery of their attentions. Whose attentions? Whoever was responsible. So you were left completely undisturbed? Yes. Thank you. My house is very well protected, Mr. Sullivan, by my staff, burglar alarms. I have some valuable items here. The insurance companies insist. Oh, thank you, Colonel. The Crowley family, Miss Hurst. Movements 5.30 until time of incident. Oh, thank you. What about Mr. and Mrs. Parker at White Rose Cottage? There's still no information to establish their afternoon movements, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. Hammer down, age six? Covergirl contest? No, I... Oh, just a moment. Can you hold on, please? Thank you. Susan, there's a call for you. It's the organisers of your competition. Want you to know why I didn't turn up? Maybe they don't read the newspapers. Now, we'll, uh, we'll need to analyse all the items sold at the village stores on the 16th. The, uh, the cash sales are a bit difficult to trace, but uh, do what you can. There is a register. Uh, Good morning. Morning. Don't let me interrupt. Yes, all right. I'll see him. But as things stand, I wouldn't dream of going. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. 
cover girl competition. He wants me to go to Paris. Congratulations. I'm not surprised. I have to be in Paris. My publisher is bringing over his boring wife. Susan. Yes. Did you accept? Well, I said yes, providing this business is all settled. I couldn't possibly go without knowing my father was safe. Oh, and they wanted me to have a medical checkup. Didn't you tell them the authorities had seen to all that? Yes, but they wanted one of their own. And probably didn't believe the official reports. Uh, they've made an appointment with a Dr. Brogan, a couple of miles out of the village. Am I allowed to go? I'll take you. Now? Nothing like it. Dr. Brogan. Yes. I'm Susan Lewis. Mr. Duxford, accounted for. Two bags of nitrate fertilizer, Mrs. Jackson, accounted for. One gallon of white paint, Mr. Lewis. You make anything out of it all? No. I check journeys, long distance phone calls, purchases. Everything so far points to a normal day. Hammer down eight six. Stuart, I see. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. That cover girl contest. There's no such thing? Oh, yes, there's a competition, all right. But they've never telephoned before, and they don't know anything about a Paris heat. Did you have an examination? Yes, I did. Well, uh, tell us about it. Well, it was just an examination. And nothing else happened? No. Oh, yes, he did give me an injection. What for? Oh, I don't know. To go abroad for Paris, I suppose. Don't need an injection to go to Paris. You don't? No, of course you don't. Oh, I don't know. It, what with my father, this whole Annabelle, business... Annabelle, take I Susan don't... to the nearest hospital. Find out exactly what she was injected with. Yes, use my car. OK. Come on, let's go. Charles Brogan. You weren't in your surgery this afternoon. Surgery? Look, I'm a doctor, but a doctor of biology, not medicine. Who are you? Now, let's start again. You're Dr. Brogan? Yes. And who was here this afternoon running a surgery? Look, I have the slightest idea what you're talking about. I, I have only just got back. Two men came here this morning. One had a gun. I was put in a car and driven along the coast. Well, we sat, waiting. I asked what for, they wouldn't tell me. So I broke for it, ran along the cliff. There was a struggle. I fell, was pushed, I don't know. A couple of hours later, I woke up, 15 or 20 feet down, amongst the rocks. Who treated you? A local doctor. Look. You, you want proof for my story? She's in a rather nervous state. I'd like to keep her in overnight. What was she injected with? Well, the tests seemed fairly conclusive. It was H2O, plain, ordinary water. Crazy. Nothing short of crazy. Somebody half kills a man to get him out of the way so he can inject Susan Lewis with water. 
Make some sense of that, Jason. Hmm. What does Mark Kane have to offer us? Unless I mislead this board, all it's come up with is a gallon pot of white paint. Hmm. Susan Lewis's father bought it from the village store that afternoon. We traced all the transactions at the village store on the 16th, and it's almost certain that between, say, uh, 4 o'clock and 9.30, the white paint disappeared. Oh, do get to the point. It's nearly lunchtime. I'm going to. I had the village searched, and everything newly painted was listed. Oh, uh, slow down. It's, uh, it's the first on the left. about it at all. The paint must have been used on this post. Looks as if it's had a hard knock recently. And was repainted with Mr. Lewis's paint. How can you be certain of that? The paint was missing. It had to come from somewhere. Really? Did you get a sample? Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for the analyst's report. Think this has got anything to do with it? Maybe. The house is down that way. I Deserted, and a mile down that road, they're undisturbed. Which means it's crazier than ever. Hmm. Well, as we're here, we might as well see the rest of it. Look what I found. What? Grass has been burnt there. Sulfuric acid. I assume this heavy silence means we can't raise a thought between us. But don't just do something. Sit there. Whenever I feel the urge to exercise, I lie down until it passes. Sounds like one of Mr. Kane's lines. It will be, Oscar. It will be. There's in a cross. What would they do? Three letters. Quote, they, unquote, came back for Susan Lewis because she was here at that time and on that day. But they didn't know it. Suppose we allowed it to be known that someone else was in the village at that time and on that day. What would they do? Let's find out. A, C, T. I've arrived at a decision on which the Security Council is expected to vote tonight. Closer home. The baffling mystery of Hambledown, the Hampshire ghost village, took a dramatic turn tonight when it was revealed that Susan Lewis was not the only person left when the inhabitants disappeared. A world-touring American, Mr. George Bounty, claims he was sleeping in a barn on the outskirts of Hambledown on the fateful night. He is now under special interrogation at the headquarters established in the village by the investigation team. Mr. Bounty, who is studying medieval architecture in Britain, was en route from Salisbury to Winchester. Susan's just phoned. Susan's just phoned. They saw the movie. Loves Annabelle's flat. So they're nicely tucked away. What will we do if they don't plan to take you anywhere? Well, I'll play it by ear, I guess. Now, somehow I don't think they will, though. They could have killed Susan this afternoon, they didn't. They could have killed Brogan, and they didn't. Well, they didn't kill him, but they made an awful mess. Hey, man. <laughs> you think they'll fall for it? They always do in my novels. Pleasant dreams. You told me you'd searched the entire village. We did. Thoroughly. Including every barn? You can't be sure, can you? This may be a trap, Colonel. I know it could. I've already considered that. The alternative is conceivably ruin. No. No choice. I really have no choice. This fellow must be dealt with. Agreed, yet? Agreed, Colonel.
I've never met anyone like you in my life. How could you go and get yourself knocked out again? Well, at the time, it seemed to happen quite naturally. And where's Stuart? I knew I shouldn't have left the two of you on your own. You should have put a watch on, called the police, anything but... That's stopping. enough. Stuart can look after himself, and we're going to need all the patience we've got. Thank you, nurse. I want your help. We did learn something. Susan was right about those uniforms. They're obviously some kind of protective clothing. Okay, I'm sorry. Protection against what? Doctor, have you got the result? Well, yes. I've run him for a test I can think of several times, in fact. Oh, it's the same as before. There's no doubt at all. Uh, it's water. Name? Uh, who wants to know, man? Just answer. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, why, why don't you say so? He wants to know? Uh, George. George uh, Bounty. How do you do? Where were you on the night of the 16th? Man, you're, you're as bad as a fuzz. Hey, you ain't the fuzz, are you? Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, you made, you made your point. 16th, that was... Was that the night that the good folk of Hamel down up and split? That's right. Yeah, well, let me see. There. I was flaked out in the barn there. And? Well, I, I can't help you, man. I didn't see a thing. 
Okay, I'll, I'll bet you're afraid I'm gonna tell the fuzz. Well, let it ride, man. I don't like them any better than you do. You're wasting your time. I'm not a man of violence, Mr. Sullivan. Far from it. But I think on this occasion, I leave you no choice. Are you expecting a special delivery? Special? Oh, yes, it's the analyst report. Report? What for? On the wooden post that we found. When I was a child, I received a jigsaw puzzle. The more pieces I got, the harder it was to fix the puzzle. Are you crazy, too, or just touchingly loyal? You can do the rest yourself. Why not? Just act naturally. What you got here, summer camp? You'll find out. We'll wait till they're clear. Sit down. Mm, they're right, glass chippings. According to this, from a car's headlamp. Here's something on the paint scrapings. There's another color under the white. Mm, paint from the car that hit the post. Car crash. All signs of the crash obliterated, even to the point of burning an area bare with acid. What was in that car? What type of car was it? Answer that. We might trace the owner. Well, there were about a dozen layers of paint under the car. That means an expensive car. Hand built. How can you know that? Most assembly line cars are lucky to get a couple of coats and a top spray of acrylic. A Rolls Royce? Do you know one? Yes, Colonel Loring. I've never met him. He lives just outside the village, Loring Hall. As I said, Mr. Sullivan, I am averse to killing. Unnecessary killing. I saw a great deal, you know, during the war. It's an old tune, Colonel. But it's still around because of people like you. This time, it's different. It's always different. There's always an excuse, a justification. You're wrong, Sullivan. Read some history, Colonel. It's been said before. I've read my history. And my reading tells me that this world is inevitably doomed. Unless you intervene. Unless someone intervenes. I have bought a weapon, Sullivan. One that no government can ignore. My objective is control of foreign policy. Britons, Russia's, the United States, China's. It's a modest pitch. But it can be done. In a foreign policy, you understand. I would uh, scrupulously avoid interference in the internal affairs of any state. I speak of you. May I ask you a question, Colonel? Of course. You say you're averse to killing. Why else should I choose to move an entire village? Why, oh, indeed. But if any government should laugh at this weapon, should refuse to believe you, should decline to let you control their foreign policy, what is your next step? But they won't decline. They can't. How can you be sure? Suppose they do. Then they must be taught. By the use of your weapon, by killing. The killing would be necessary. But confined. In fact, Colonel, the same old tune. Confined, but necessary.
thanks for the uh, brandy, although I get the idea it's not for medicinal purposes. Drink it. Oh, no. Not the car ride bit. Don't bother with questions. You know, I have a friend, a um, colleague. He's, he'd be very upset. It shows no imagination at all. Save your breath. I'm not even listening. Yeah. Well, Mark Kane's faced just about everything. He's never faced anything like this. Drink it. Now it looks like you'll just have to shoot me. Lewis, why? Yes, the whole village is here. You came here voluntarily? Well, yes, once the danger was pointed out. Of course, I don't remember very much about it. I mean, my first thought when they arrived was for Susan. And she was asleep upstairs? Right. Anyway, I ran to get her, but they seemed to think I was trying to run away. I don't know why. Anyway, they, uh, they hit me. Marvelous twist at the end. And no one else remembered Susan? No. No, they didn't. I mean, so much was happening. It wasn't until I recovered, here, that they knew anything at all about her. By that time, we'd arrived, so they used the beauty contest as an excuse. Now, look, just one moment. Would you mind telling me what all this is about? The research work is complete. I need further time for design of operational equipment, say, six weeks. And then it will be simply a question of manufacturing. I see. And the new strain? From just one virus, one deformed virus, this whole mutant strain has been developed, Colonel. A strain sufficiently powerful to kill within four days of exposure. But uh, not infectious? No. When the host body dies, the virus dies. But it can be introduced into water supplies by spray a thousand ways. This has all been most encouraging. Not to mention expensive. Unfortunately, yes. Just one unit costs a hundred thousand pounds. And of course, the Colonel's loaded. He is a very rich man, yes. You're wasting your money, Colonel. Listen, Sullivan. Think of the possibilities. A world without war. Nuts. I can achieve it with this virus. If any government dares to ignore me, I can mount a four-day plague. And at the end of it, people can enter the area unharmed. A totally effective but genuinely limited weapon. Nuts. Give me time, a little time, to prepare sufficient quantities. Why did you abduct the village, Colonel? Brogan crashed my car. He was carrying the bacteria. And so you sprayed the spot with acid? And removed the villagers to save life, Sullivan, to inject them with the antidote. Like Susan Lewis? Of course. We had no reason to kill her. What about Brogan's injuries? The car crash, of course. Ah, oh, yes. Annabelle will be very pleased to know why the post was painted. You covered all your tracks, didn't you? Because of the reason behind it. I told you there was a marvelous twist at the end. Yates? All right, Sullivan. Drop that gun. Sullivan, do as he says. You don't look very worried yet. A four-day plague is about to come your way. This is your last chance, Sullivan. You haven't been inoculated. As I said before, nuts. <laughs> 
Don't worry, Colonel, it's harmless. You've been taken for a very expensive ride by Brogan and the trusty Yates here. It's not too late. Brogan supplied you with an antidote to inject Susan Lewis, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he did. Well, any virus that can't survive water isn't going to trouble the governments of the world. It's water, Colonel. This is not water. Tell them, Brogan. There is no antidote, because there is no virus. Your ideals were made for Brogan, Colonel. You saw a world without war, and he saw dollar signs. It was just one big confidence game. About the worst you'd catch from that stuff is a bad head cold. My only objection to a cold in the head is the effect it has on the palate. Achoo! Bless me. It doesn't do justice to your father's excellent cellar. Thank you. Talbo. Fifty-seven. Perfect. Bless you.